couple seconds to breathe. to breathe a little bit. I'll be trying so hard not to move. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sure, but, All right. I heard you. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Listen, if you haven't had a chance to go on ahead to our website, www.thetcpnetwork.com and listen to WTCP Radio, our digital on air live radio station playing uh, your favorite oldies and goodies from the 99 and over, over, over the 2000s. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, guys, listen, thank you so much for joining us on this phenomenal Thursday morning. It's going to be a real spring day today here in Lancaster County, and I'm so glad that you're joining us for TCP in the morning. We got a bombastic show. Bombastic. Yes, I had to make up a new word today. Bombastic show uh, for you all. So go on ahead, share the stream. We're going to be talking about HBCUs. We're going to be talking about vandalism. We're going to be talking about... Uh, uh, black, uh, historically black sororities and fraternities. We're, we're going to talk about uh, these STIs. If you don't know what an STI is, I want you to go and Google it. Because they're raising the roof. Just like COVID, they're increasing too. So, uh, guys, yes, thank you for joining us. Go on ahead and share the stream, and I'll be right back with the whole team. This is TCP. You, yeah, you listening to this podcast. Do me a favor and head over to the TCPnetwork.com. TCP, or The Culture Professional, is Pennsylvania's first digital platform to highlight the voices of disenfranchised groups. With 13 podcasts and counting, there's something for everyone. Entertainment a la carte is what we like to say. Again, that's the TCPnetwork.com and The Culture Professional on Facebook. TCP, it's a movement, not a moment. Wake up, guys. It's TCP in the morning. Wake up. 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 It's TCP in the morning. 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 Good morning. Wake up, y'all. It's TCP in the morning with the morning tea. Sing the song here in the back. TCP in the morning. Uh-oh. Let it woo! Uh oh! All right! All right! Uh-oh. All right! Pow! All right! Pow! Folks, <laughs> we are um here. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-oh. Feeling good. Feeling great. Feeling great. Feeling good. Uh-oh. How are you all doing? Welcome to the greatest show on earth. The best thing well, since birth. Well. A lot of things are going to happen today. Well, it's going to be a lot of screaming. Well, it's going to be a lot of beaming. Well, there's going to be a lot of something. Well, well, giving you everything you need, everything okay. you wanted. Yep, and the things that you did not know existed. We got the Sarge, Lady ah. L, Double O. Let's it's get it, CCP, y'all. Baby. Welcome Go. to the show. Ladies and gentlemen, wake your ass up, brush your teeth, brush your ass, because your morning well, team up. is back. Sarge, what up, man? Well, what up, what up, what up? How y'all doing? Happy Thursday. Thursday, hey. Thursday in the house. Our Thursday, wait, your Thursday. Our Thursday. But our Friday. Yeah, man. And we out. We about to be on vacation. Yep. But if this is your first time tuning in, welcome to the show. It is so nice to meet you. Yeah, man. We so nice today. to see you. Let's go, y'all. Lady out, what up? Hey, good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm so glad that you're here with us. I told you earlier, we got a bombastic show for you today. And guess what? Guess what? Guess what? We're going on vacation! Ah! So share the stream, because you won't be able to see these mugs. 
for a week. Over to the desk. Over to the desk, folks. Want to let you know. Yeah, Rebecca, you know it. Sun's out, guns out. Yay! Welcome to the gun show. You see him. Five beta Sarge. Listen, up. listen. Which way is <laughs> the gym, Peter? Five beta Sarge. Yes, yes. Uh, my name is Marquis Lupton, one of three hosts, one of four personalities on this thing we call TCP in the morning. The best thing that you can have in your cup. Bang. Folks. Also go by the name of DJ Quiet Storm. DJ, DJ Quiet, Quiet Storm. Storm. And let's toss it on over to Double O. That was so out of whack for me. It but was it's all very right. out of whack. That's all that I mean. Listen, it's, it's the day before vacation. Clearly you on vacation time right now. <laughs> Already. And, and, it's, and it's all good, man. Let the people know how you feeling today, man. I'm happy to be here. I'm looking for people to call out in the comments. Yeah. I ain't see anybody I need to call out yet. But I'm here. We here. Let's get these people the news, man. Yes, absolutely. Folks, uh, we have a jam-packed show for you today. Um, uh, as you see in the um, description... We're going to let you know who the next governor of the Commonwealth is going to be. You may not believe me now, but trust me, the tea leaves have been read. Uh -oh. um, also, uh, the PA Senate passed legislation um, banning ballot drop boxes because, you know, there's nothing else going on in this uh, state that we should pass bills on besides, you know, banning ballot boxes because they were just hurting this state. I'm glad that they banned those. Um, uh, it's the tongue and cheek. Also, um, reports say that people that are pregnant and vaccinated, pregnant and vaccinated, um, are actually at the highest risk of, of, of getting COVID, uh, uh something that, that, that you may not see, um, um, on your mainstream because that is a bit alarming. Um, especially people that, uh, that, 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 um, got vaccinated and that did become pregnant. They don't want to hear that. Well, be now that you took the vaccine, you're uh, more susceptible to catching COVID, you know. So uh, we are going to uh, peel back those details and um, get into that. And then um, also, this is just freaking disgusting. Um, rideshare apps accused of uh, sur surge charging immediately after uh, the New York uh, shooting, which, again, is disgusting. Are these businesses taking advantage of? of our pain we're going to uh get into that uh quick easy answer yes <laughs> <laughs> so so with, with that said lisa good morning neville good morning to you taekwon good morning and rebecca says sun's out guns out uh Bang. for those people uh, uh that are just watching that are just looky lose say good morning don't be rude um uh, we, want you, we, we, we want you to interact with us uh that this is this is church so this is call and response. Uh, so please join in. We want to read those comments um, as as well. Um, Don't be shy. Right. Speak to us. Yes, yeah, speak to us. Uh, so I believe it is that time. Uh oh. I believe it is that time, uh, folks. Like we said, we got a, a great jam packed show for you today. Um, we're going to get into it. Feeling good, feeling great, feeling great, feeling good. How are you? Sing it one time with us. Hey. Hey. Like we said, we're going to give you the news. Hey. We're the shipmate. Let's go, fellas. Time to give the people, yeah. Give the people what they want. And that's the news. With the shimmy. Thanks for stopping by. Our first story. Yo, side note, I want to learn. How to say thanks for stopping by in Spanish so that when it comes my time again, I can be like, hey, no, my dear, how did they see Why don't you just ask our resident Spanish guy? Why don't, why, why don't I do that? He heard you say it 59 times and he ain't never said nothing. <laughs> I one of those Spanish people that don't speak Spanish. Oh, oh, I do speak Spanish. I don't want to hear that. This man said, I want to say this in Spanish 59 times. We talked about you sounding like Univision and he sat there the whole time and ain't oh, said nothing. Oh. He's not Listen. the person. Yes. I'm not the first Sabrina, man. Sabrina, in the comments, please let us know. I'm not the first man. I'm not the first man. Well, well, I don't say I was fluent. I said I speak it. <laughs> get yourself together. I know enough that I won't get lost. Right. Right. Oh, no, I can, oh, I, I can oh, find oh, the yeah. main road again. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm, All right. I'm getting lost, bro. Uh, uh, yeah. A absolutely. Lost. Absolutely. Uh, so, uh, uh, latest poll shows uh, Mastriano 
leading in PA's packed GOP gubernatorial primary race. Uh, so with little more than a month to go before the May 17th primary, Republican gubernatorial uh, candidate Doug Mastriano holds the lead in the crowded field of candidates vying for that party's nomination. The poll shows Mastriano, a state senator from Franklin County, with 19% of support from among the 502 likely GOP primary voters who were polled between April 7th and April 9th by Eagle Consulting Group, a Republican consulting firm based in Harrisburg. He was followed by a former federal prosecutor, Bill McSwain, of Chester County with 12.75 support. Um, and then former Congressman Lou Barletta of Luzerne County with 11% and businessman Dave White of Delaware County with 7%. The remaining GOP candidates, State Senator uh, Jake Corman, uh, County Commissioner Joe Gale, uh, political strategist uh, Charlie Gero, and um, attorney Melissa Hart and retired heart and lung uh, surgeon Nietzsche Zama of uh, Northampton County all received all are receiving less than 2% of the vote. Just as notable, it found 44% of those polled remained undecided as to who will get their vote in the primary to face off against presumed Democratic nominee Josh Shapiro, who is unopposed for his party's nomination. The poll's findings uh, that come on the heels of one um, by Emerson College polling conducted the week before that also had Mastriana leading the pack with 16.2%. So, uh, uh, this poll shows uh, the millions that McSwain and his backers have spent as well on TV ads and is starting to boost his stock in the primary. This comes from Christopher Nichols, who is the president of the Eagle Consulting Group. Uh, the Eagle Consulting Group has a margin of error of plus or minus 4.3%. Um, and and uh, they have also noted uh, that the poll took place before Tuesday's announcement by former President Donald Trump that he was not endorsing McSwain and had convinced Corman, who was ready to withdraw his candidacy, to stay in the race. So, y'all, 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 y'all just get ready. You know, uh, uh, this is, this is. This is uh, who our next governor is going to be. You can um, say Quiet Storm. No. You can say Quiet Storm. You're crazy. You can say Quiet Storm. Shut up. But if we look at, um, uh, let's call it the histrionomics. If we look at the histrionomics of, of this state, you know, um, who was the governor before um, Wolf? Corbett. Who was a Republican? Before that, we had our uh, uh, Democrat, um, and before that, we had our Republicans. So we go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So the pendulum is going to swing right back, and my fear is that when it swings back to the right, that it's not going to swing back to the left because congressmen and, and uh, state senators are doing everything they can to keep, maintain, and consolidate power. Just my thoughts, folks. Where you at with this, Sarge? I'm with uh, this Doug Mastrano. Like, why is he getting all the support? Is it because mm. he's a Trumper? Like, he was at the January 6th insurrection. Yes, he was. You know, um, and he could ride that 2020, where he was denying the 2020 election. Yeah. You know, and he's go he could ride that into the PA governor's mansion. And that's why it's up to us as voters to not let that happen. Yeah. You know, why would they want to, uh, we're going to elect a conspiracy theorist to be governor? Yeah, you know, like um, they say, oh, he was a soldier, this and that. Okay, well, well, cool, that's outstanding. But what does that mean? Right. Like, okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. A lot of people have uh, a lot of people have sacrificed and then took on that. Uh, took, yeah, you know, made made the vow. You know, it doesn't mean he's right for this country. It doesn't mean he, uh, for this country. It doesn't mean he's right for this state. Right. You know, just because uh, he's a he's a trumper. You know, he he organized and attended the Save of America rally down there. You know, so he, he brought people down with him. Yeah. So is that really where America's still at? We want to go back to that? Like, do we want to have little individual sac uh, individual factions? Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Listen, y'all. We got to be careful. Um, one of the, the people uh, is uh, pro-energy. All right? One of the people who's running for governor is pro-energy. 
energy. Uh, and so I, I believe you might have mentioned his name, McSwain. Mm -hmm. He's pro energy. So let me tell you what that means. Remember Lancaster against the pipeline, those people, they're going to have to come back out and make another appearance. Because. I don't know why they lost. That's because they arrested them. Yeah, well, 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 they still lost. So and here's the thing. Pipeline's still going on in people's backyards. Sorry. Go His ahead. idea for governor <laughs> as governor of Pennsylvania is turning on the spigot of natural gas. Mm. I don't know if you guys are familiar with um, fracking. Yep. But I tell you what, I, I, I would hate for our neighbors in the county to be to start experiencing that. So here's the thing. Pennsylvania is number two for natural as a natural gas producer after Texas. So the importance of, of this industry is emerging as a top issue among Republican contenders for for the governor's mansion. And I mean, I'm pretty sure somebody heard me say that, talk about this in the gas line and everything. And I'm pretty sure they're like, oh, lower my gas. And at, at, at what cost? At what cost could we maybe have 325 gas? Right? Because it ain't, it, it, it's not going to be $1.25 like we all want, like we've all been asking for. That's yeah. not what they're going to do. They never do that. We have gas right here in the United States. We're the second producer. Texas is first. And that's just what we're talking about here in, from this particular article. And yet gas is dang near $5. Oh, also, guys, if you're curious, I have found gas for under $4 here in Lancaster County. Ask me in the comments, and I will tell you where they are. Over to the desk. <laughs> um, when, when we think about, um, uh, um, and th this is what I was talking about with um, uh, the governors. And this is just the past... 20 years, all right, just so that we could be official with this, all right? We got Tom Wolf, uh, who is Democrat, all right? Governor Tom Corman, Republican. Uh, Governor Ed Rendell, Democrat. And then before that, from uh, 2001 to 2003, Governor Mark Scheibwalker, Republican. Um, he, he just, he, he just governed for two years. And then before that was, uh, Tom Ridge from 95 to 2001, who was a Republican. And before that was Bob Casey from 1987 to 1995, who was a Democrat. Then before that was Dick Thorberg, who was a Republican from 1979 to 1987. Like, and then it, like it goes like, like, like it, it, it's a trend that goes back to 1967. 1967. So, again, to look at the histronomics of things, this thing is going to swing right back to the right, you know, and, and I'm not trying to have this cause of alarm or anything like that. I'm looking at the history of things and what history tells us what happens in this state. Now, this is a problem because he is a election den denier. And if we have a election denier as the head of our state, then we're going to look like Texas, Florida, Mississippi. You know, we're going to look like all those other weird states where it's like, yo, why are these oppressive hate, hate filled laws coming down the pipeline when there's so many other issues going on right now? Because those that are in power want to keep the power. Yes. And it's very interesting that we have somebody, you know, that the especially on the Republican side, that a part of this natural gas, they're going to be leveraging this information to jockey for their front running position. And the crazy thing is, is that our neighbors, New Jersey and New York, they're working to get rid of natural gas. They're working to eliminate greenhouse gases like they're they're working towards it. That's what our neighbors in these other states are doing. So then what are what are we going to be doing? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like like Democratic governors in New York and New Jersey, they blocked the construction of major interstate pipelines. Mm. So while Lancaster against the pipeline was out here getting arrested, their governors blocked it. Right. Doing the work. Doing the work. Um to your point, Lady L, uh on uh, the top the top 3 fracking counties. We have Bradford County, Susquehanna County, and Greene County. All lean heavily Republican, mm. heavily seventy percent or more. So, so, um, so when the fracking does come down, and when their areas are destroyed, 
they would have nobody to blame but themselves because they would have been a part of the engine to vote this person in. And that's... Uh, so Brad, the, Bradford County, all right, so some of these counties where we had, they're up in the mountains uh, for the most part. That doesn't make it right, um, you know, but... Uh, these smaller towns, like they're all all the land that are up there, people are getting people are getting paid for that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like if people, people, some people that own land from that aren't from the aren't from Bradford County, you know, but they own acres of land. These gas companies will come in and they'll pay them eleven hundred dollars, twelve hundred, thirteen, sixteen hundred dollars an acre mm-hmm. just to frack on their land, and they'll they'll give them a certain amount of the royalties or keep the royalties. But anyway, like people are getting rich off of this. Yeah, but then they also have the health concerns as well with their water catching on fire. Not if they don't, so. live, not if they don't live there. Right. But you still have the other community members, though. But they don't live there. They don't care. Kind of like, kind of like where. But that doesn't make it right. Yeah, it's just but like also, you're not, not all, my right. neighbor, right? I don't know you. It's like I don't know town. you, John, who might have some now skin cancer because you've been showering in this water with the oil in it. That's not my problem. I don't know you. And it's not my responsibility yes. that you don't have proper insurance to pay for the care that you now need because you got, you know, you got sick. There has oh, there's something called environmental racism, and 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 you know, the concern is is that even with you know, in more affluent communities in these suburbs, you know, or even surrounding them, the the more poorer communities that are in the suburbs. You know, they're, those are the people that are going to start being impacted, right? And going to the doctor for cancer treatment is not a cheap thing. It's not a cheap thing. And, then, and it's a cyclical thing, right, because we get a governor that comes in and says, all right, let's, let's turn on the spigot of natural gas. Okay, so now we've gone from those three counties to now seven counties or maybe more. And now we have an increase of people getting sick, getting certain types of cancers and things of that nature. Who's going to be tracking this? Who's going to be, you know, monitoring it to, to say this legit came from turning on that spigot? Yeah. Like, how will we be able to then hold even that, that at this point, that governor responsible? Because everybody was trying to save a dollar, you know, a dollar on their gas. We got a caller here. Uh, call, caller, what's going on? You're, you're on our TCP in the morning. Good morning, good morning. Gary Brown here. Hey, good morning, oh, Gary. What's going on, Uncle Gary? How you doing? Good morning. Folks, I got to tell you. I, I pulled a uh, Dennis, remember the story about Dennis Robin uh, playing for San Antonio Spurs? Mm-hmm. Uh, he went, why he went back to the hotel room and tore it up. Yeah. Ah, yes. He's, he's in the huddle there at this game. He said they didn't have the eye of the tiger. Mm-hmm. They all they had that E or mentality like they're gonna lose. Yeah. Well, I pulled one of those at a Hemphill uh, Democratic meeting. Nah. Uh, how they take went it? Fucking, I went crazy. I was so upset. Mm-hmm. I don't care how they took it because I just read about another black man being shot yeah. in the back of the head by a police officer, white police officer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they're telling me they can't win. They can't win. That attitude of if they can't win, you can't like with the new redistricting. They don't know if they can win or not. Right. Right. You know? Yeah. I was so freaking angry with these people, and they just like, oh, you're insulting us. I said, well, all you've been doing is losing, and you're doing the same thing, expecting a different result. Yeah. And you that's know? insanity. It's, it's, you, you, it is truly the definition of insanity. Yeah. And they sit there so freaking calm, like, oh, like Eeyore, man. Yeah. I'm not used... I'm not used to that. <laughs> don't, tell me, don't tell me we're going to lose and sit there. And, what, what, does the Republican own you or what? Mm. Are you paying? Are they getting paid off by the Republicans or what? Yeah, I don't get that. I don't get that. People I, just. I, I, I'm, it's so fucking upsetting to me. Yeah. You just fall it's in line. Upsetting to me. I'm sorry. I'm on, I'm on the air. It's cool. It, it, it's cool. It, air it out. It bothers me. That these people have such an attitude of losing, and then they look at me like the angry blind man. Yeah, I was angry, mm. and then and then and guess what? What's up? I'm not going to get their endorsement. Of course not. They're not going to work for me. They didn't want to work for me before. See, 
we need to expose this stuff. This yes, kind of stuff. absolutely. They're not helping. They're not helping people of color at all. That's the same. Um. Uh. That's that's the same thing that Nelly was saying about the uh, city Democrats in Lancaster City. She was saying the exact same thing. DC. I mean, I want to say the city is changing a little bit. Mm -hmm. But but I'm here in the suburbs. Okay, where. I think they're afraid we're taking over. We're coming in. Minorities are coming in and taking over that. the space. And they're, they're, they're comfortable. They're complacent. And they, they, they have the, like, how could you run an election and be involved with an election or anything? And not, It's like playing basketball game for, for a season. Like, oh, oh we're going to lose every game. Right. They were just like, we'll just lose. Right. It's, we're not about that. Yeah. It's that loser mentality. Oh, oh. Four o'clock in the morning to start their day. They're used to being number one. And then I come to this demographics of folks who are just like, oh, no. Mm. We're not going to win. Yeah. I blew up. I blew up. If I, it, it, was a, it, was, it was a it was a Zoom meeting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if they'd have been in a room with me, they'd, be, they'd all be like, oh, my God, this big black man. <laughs> uh, well, um. Uh, well, um, uh, Uncle Gary, thank you for um, calling up. Call up again, um, and and um, we're gonna uh, follow up with this because I mean this is definitely um, um, a, a story, a situation that we need to continuously talk about, um, uh, especially since um, there's a trend. Like like you're you're talking about the, the the same things that are going on in the city that are happening out in um, Hempfield. So so yeah. I gotta, I gotta say this. If I if I'm gonna get Wow. Uh, this oh, we could do Columbia. Because they, they just like. <laughs> wow. Well, then. Um, Sound like you ready to go on tour, Gary? Well, then, look. Um, um, we're going to um, get you on the show after um, the uh, break. So we will uh, contact you after this uh, uh, program. All right. All right. Talk to you soon. Man, oh man, oh man. Passionate. Yeah, 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 yeah. Love that, folks. Uh, uh, call up 717 992 5569. 717-992-5569. Uh, Sarge, can you uh, take us to our next story? Yes, not going Please. too far away from this great state of PA, the Keystone State, as people like to call it. Ballot drop boxes and private funding of elections would be banned in Pennsylvania under new legislation that was passed that passed the Senate on Wednesday. Support, supporters of the measure promoted them as necessary to restore voter confidence and integrity of elections, an issue that has become a mounting concern among segments of the electorate since the 2020 presidential election. The ballot drop box plan passed the chamber on a 29-20 party line vote. The measure barring the private use of money to pay for election operations passed by a bipartisan 37-12 vote, with eight Democrats joining the GOP counterparts and independent COG League in supporting the bill. Both measures now go to the State House of Representatives for consideration. Governor Tom Wolf has signaled a willingness to consider providing funding for elections, but he rejects the notion that using ballot drop boxes are not secure or encourage fraud, his spokeswoman said. Senator, Lizzie, Senator Le, Lisa Baker R. from Luzerne, Ca, Luzerne County, who sponsored the bill. Man, it's like a cesspool. Pri, uh, like banning <laughs> private funding for elections. It says her legislation states, what was already thought to be a fact, government should pay for elections. It did in Pennsylvania until 2020 when an outside group that included Facebook founder and CEO Mark Zuckerberg contributed $22.5 million to fund election operations in certain counties. Email correspondence from the Department of State officials indicated some counties were given first dibs for that money. Senator Kristen Phillips-Hill, Republican from York County, a bill co-sponsor, department officials have said all counties were allowed to apply for some of that outside money from the Center for Tech and Civic Life. Mm. If we do not shut off this valve now, each side will figure out ways to get their funders to step in to engineer ways to get more of their votes cast, Baker said. It is not a good look. Last thing we want to do is get more people voting, is what I'm saying. <laughs> Our legislation requires that the source of funding to run elections be limited to money derived from taxes, fees, and other sources of public revenue. 
Senator Sharif Street, Democrat from Philadelphia, failed in his attempt to amend the bills to include money for counties. He said it was unfair to tell counties they must only use government funds to cover their election costs without saying the state is prepared to give them some. Otherwise, he said, this is just another unfunded mandate from Harrisburg. Uh, I want to stop there real quick before I go into the drop boxes. Oh, uh, that right there, hearing that me said, you know who controls the Pennsylvania government. So you know where, the, where they're going to send the money to. Mm-hmm. Like, we talk about all these different things that Governor Tom Wolf is trying to do on his way out of office as far as getting funding for uh, to different schools for education, you know, everything that's going on there. Yeah. This is just a big, this is going to be a big setback. It's like saying, hey, look, let's just take control here. Then we'll make it seem like we were controlling it. Because this will make le- communities with less money. Yeah. Communities that aren't funded well. They ain't going to get to vote. Oh, well. They don't need the technology. They don't need the transportation to get there. They don't need nothing. You know, uh, you guys want to speak on that before I go to the drop boxes? Uh, yeah, you know what's interesting, um, and... I'll, I, if you guys are curious, I'll put it in the box for you, in the box, in the comment section for you. But um, the PA Senate GOP.com actually has videos that they say validate why they they needed to have gotten rid of these, essentially these ballot drop boxes. And it's interesting. So the one video that I looked at, this man, he has like four or five, like, uh, I guess, voting things and he like drops them all in the, in the ballot and I'm just like okay he probably got a mom some sisters a daughter a son a house full of people old enough to vote and he was the lucky one who had to go and drop it all off right so now my thing is 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 that illegal is it illegal for me to to do my my stuff and send it to somebody that I know is going to the drop box they, they, so that particular video that I watched, they called it ballot harvesting. So, uh, so also, so um, somebody else had mentioned that drop boxes are the least secure way to vote in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania because drop boxes were written into law by the courts. The Senate is now taking steps to mitigate the negative effects of that action and restore the integrity of our elections. They say that eliminating the drop boxes um, that evidence shows are breeding grounds for suspicious activity. And this will go a long way towards restoring the public's confidence in our elections and results. Our bill will require ballots be returned to a single central location in each county to streamline the process, prevent tampering, and preserve a strict chain of custody. For those of us that live in towns like, I don't know, Lancaster, Kutztown, Mansfield, Shippensburg, some of these small places where a centralized location could be seven miles away yeah, with no bus service. And you may not have a car, so please tell me how are all of these people getting to that one centralized location? People have trouble getting to the building of the Lancaster County building on Queen Street if you live in Quarryville. If you live in Africa, if you live in E-Town, and you got to come into the city to handle your business. And now they're essentially saying that that's what you're going to have to do for voting if you can't make it out to your actual place to vote. This is, this is getting out of hand, and this is how they continue to perpetuate the oppression of black and brown people. Right? You know who you're impacting with this. You know the people that are going to be like, you know what? I just can't do it. Forget about it. Let's leave it alone. They're setting it up, and I, I swear my handsome husband co-host said this earlier. They're setting it up to really give power to themselves, right? As they're in these positions in the Senate and um, the House of Representatives, they're setting up laws and setting up strategies to keep their own power for themselves. And if you're not a part of the GOP, then you you may end up having some other issues, but that's what I first see. Like they're they're turning us into we're about to be one party, a one party system, and that's going to be the GOP party because they're going to have all the laws written and set up in such a way that it's like they decide what our schools are teaching, 
Right, they got they, the state They house. decide how you gonna vote, if you can vote at all, where yeah. you gonna go to vote. They're deciding all of these things, yep. and all of these things are measures to continue to oppress people of color and mitigate our efforts to vote and make change, make legitimate change through legislation, because that's where it is. Go ahead, uh, DJ Double O. No, I was just saying that you were. I was agreeing with you 100. percent I'm sorry. Oh no, no, no. Over all right, uh, over to the desk. Um, the the thing is 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 that um Republicans really 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 hate poor people, um and and the fact that um Lazy. uh they 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 continuously get um consistent report um support uh from uh from people that are uh financially challenged I'll say that um it really uh, uh confuses me like like lawmakers are supposed to make. Um, the voting process easier, not harder. Like, if I want you to vote for me, and if I know that I'm a dope politician, I'm going to do everything in my power to make it easier for you to vote for me because I know that I'm dope because I what? Boom! Trust my dopeness. Right. Why? Why would you want someone to not vote? Why would you want me right. to not vote? Like, right. Like, speak to the truth of that. Right. Like the intention of <laughs> the intention of not wanting someone to vote. Why? What did that speak to? Them not voting for you. Right. So you're, the less people you can get to vote, the less people you can get to vote for the other person. This sounds like a stupid way to try and win a race. Yeah. I, I, I mean, it's, it's, you know, they're, um, they're, they're pulling out all, all tricks, um, um, pull, pulling out all stops. And, and, and yeah, like you would, uh, again, you would think that your, your lawmaker, uh, the person that is, you know, heading or, or in charge of your district, state, county, municipality, what have you, um, would would make the election process a lot easier to keep them in said power. You would think that they would make it easier, but we see that they're not um, um, resorting back to, you know, rules and laws of of the 19, 1960s, 1950s, where they disbarred certain groups from from getting um, from from having the ability to vote, and because there are these uh, obstacles now, now you're seeing certain legislation come down the um, pipeline because yeah. they know that there's not going to be any blowback because of this legislation. We make voting hard, and 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 we remove tens of thousands of votes from the voting records. Now we can ban stuff like abortion because twenty thousand people that would have given us backlash have no way of voting against me for doing this it's all it's all a compiled uh game here folks yeah this bs about oh there's evidence of widespread drop box freaking fraud right it's crazy it's 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 all just a game it's all just a tactic like it's right it's and not dumb like i don't know why they continue to think that americans are dumb americans are just we're just drinking the kool-aid and, and taking it all in stride well, I'm sorry, it's because some of us are. Some, some of us are. Some some of us like that Kool-Aid with a little extra sugar so that we don't have to taste the tartness. Got to fight. Yeah. Like, what yeah. Ha what, happening, what happened to believing in your politics, right? Believing in your politics enough that people are going to vote for you. Like you said, Keith, trusting your dopeness. Right. And believing, listen, my platform is good enough for you to vote for me. Right. As, as opposed to, you know, uh, grading on a scale. <laughs> like, right. Basically, that's all they're doing. They're they're winning. They're, they're running races. They know they can win. Yep. Yep. Lady L. Uh, did you guys want to take it to these comments? We got uh, your answer from Lisa and Sabrina. Yep. 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 I saw that. Thank you. Uh, also, LaRock says uh, Randall might as well been a Republican. He made his bones on the back of the move bombing. Yeah. Dante LeBron says good morning. Good morning. Uh, Uncle brother. Gary put his comments. He called in and talked about it. Yeah. Uh, Rebecca, I can't see your whole comment. It says we need to stop talking about parties and so start focusing on, I'm guessing, the issues. COVID. Policies. Oh, policies. All right, so Nate Holmes says it just goes to show that going green, saving lives, and making the future safe for the masses is not in the Republican agenda, these topics of making America a better place attacks their bottom line. Uh, and then uh, we have George Campbell, who says, what it do, fruit? Morning, blessings. Good morning, George. Good morning. Uh, he says, 
Is all this a veiled attempt by Republican Party to create a little white apartheid controlling situation in the U.S.? He says, if he continues to say, if I'm not mistaken, our right to vote continues to have to be ratified still. Nate Holmes then continues to say, these tactics sound illegal, but they make the laws to yep. make it legal. That part. Right, because he who makes the rules don't have to, you know, abide by them. It's a gray area. It's a gray area. It's an absolute, absolute, absolute gray area. Because is it is it illegal? Technically, no, because there's no law against it. And because there's 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 no law against it. I can make a law saying whether or not it's okay to do this. Exactly. Because why? I'm in the position to do so. I, right. I make <laughs> laws. My job is to make laws. You know, so um, um, folks, like we say, uh, 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 stay active, get active, get involved. Um, because um, um, a lot of these politicians, and this is on both sides. This just, just isn't a Republican side. This is also um, um, a, a Democrat thing, too. A lot of these politicians are banking on what? Histronomics. History tells us that, that, that as, as a large collective group, we are not interested in politics. We have to change that. It is the tides are changing, um, but they need to uh, um, expedite uh, this this change because a lot of them uh, will continue uh, to try to pull the veil over your head because it's easy. It's easy for me to lie. It, it is so easy to lie, and it's going to take uh, um, shows like ours um, and, and 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 outlets alike to hold these officials uh, accountable and to get these real stories out. We need, we need Gary Brown energy, man. Yeah, yes. since we the need Gary Brown energy. Absolutely. Yeah, since the fifteenth amendment, you know, um, like they've it's been a constant constant attack. Constant attack. We can go back to the most direct we can go back to uh the most direct attack of the problem with African Americans discontinuing that trying to get us to discontinue voting in nineteen sixty five. Like all these it was a big fight. And like every American should be granted the the right to vote. Yep. All right, if they are of age. You should grant the right to vote. Why why are we acting like that's not the main goal anymore? Right. Why are we acting like, hey, the goal is to ensure every citizen has a voice. Instead of trying to cancel their voices out so you can stay in power and do what you think is right for the country. Right. Right. Disappointing. It is interesting that, you know, voting I mean so here in the US voting is considered a right. It is not a law, right? It is it is not mandatory to vote but you know what is mandatory a driver's license you yeah. know what else is mandatory sending your kids to school by fifth grade or five years old like that's mandatory i i you're trying something's against the law for me to home school my kid in some state yes it is if they are a certain age yes and i got to prove that i am of of a certain stature myself to educate my child at home but voting even though we know that that decides our lawmakers, the laws of the land, and it's supposed to be decided by the people, that is something that is not mandatory. But that explains why, you know, we don't, the whole country's not shut down on voting day, on election days. That You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But then they'll close down every school. But why is the school a voting site? But then you tell me that I got to send my kids to school X amount of days out the year. But yep. then you tell me that I got to register my child for school when y'all decide randomly that they're not going to have school. So, listen, guys, it's just something that we need to start thinking about and considering as we are moving forward to uh, something else. I don't know what America is going to look like, but hopefully it won't look like the purge. <laughs> over to the desk. Uh, well, I'm, I'm going to toss it right back over right to back you, to Lady, Lady L. L, for the next story. All right. So, guys, a new study finds that uh, breakthrough COVID cases are more likely to occur in pregnant people who have been vaccinated. See, and this would have been a great day for uh, our black lady doctors. Well, as we hit the midpoint in Black Maternal Health Week, there are new findings on the spread of COVID that might deeply affect how pregnant people safeguard themselves against the virus. As reported uh, last week, a new study conducted by Epic Research found that even when vaccinated, they are nearly twice as susceptible to contracting COVID as non-pregnant people. 
pregnancy has long been on the CDC's list of comorbidities, that is, medical conditions that potentially cause more vulnerability to the virus. But the medical records of 13 million U.S. patients indicated those who are pregnant and vaccinated are actually at greater risk of contracting COVID than individuals with cancer or organ transplants. Damn. Worse, they are also at greater risk of becoming seriously ill or dying as a result of the coronavirus. Damn. Originally, these increased risks were believed to bolster the argument for vaccinations. And it should be noted that vaccines and boosters are still the best general prevention against the virus to date. But since COVID has also been linked to serious complications in pregnancy, including not only deaths, but premature births and stillbirths, the findings could inform how pregnant people are vaccinated and treated, as well as the precautions an individual may take to protect themselves. Well, the results also further encourage continuation of long-standing precautions such as social distancing and mask wearing, as well as early testing and treatment when detected. While it might be argued the study's findings are due to increased testing no. during prenatal care, it should also be noted that pregnant women of color have previously been found to contract COVID at a higher rate than their white counterparts, making this pertinent information when deciding how to safeguard their pregnancies. All right, guys. So then we got some new information. If you are pregnant no. and you're vaccinated, you still want to social distance and mask up. And yeah, Yo. you still want to take those same precautions that you would have two years ago Yo. at the beginning of this pandemic. I think what's more scary is that they said not only can deaths occur, but the stillbirths. Yep. So I've been carrying this baby around for 40 weeks, thinking that we all good, and my baby comes out not not breathing. Right? Uh, so I'm definitely glad that they decided to, to, to do this research and that it's coming out. Um, so that the women can know. Right, right. Because, I mean, and, and, and people were flip-flopping, right? You had a number, and still for the black community, there's still a number of people who still have not gotten a COVID shot, and they're still like, I'm not yeah. getting the shot. And it's like, as we go through this potential another wave of virus this spring and probably summer, you there's still a number of people who are unvaccinated, and they will then probably use this as a reason to continue to not be. Yeah. Gentlemen. <coughs> um, I love, I love, love, love uh, uh, George's comment. Uh, he says, um, uh, same same as a social security number. Uh, we should be issued a voter registration card at yep. birth. Easy answers if they wanted to fix this. Yo, to that point, yes, yes. Just like, just like the military knows when I'm 18 and they send, send me, me that uh, mail. Right, right. Through the mail and 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 everything did send not me, wait. Send that me my voter registration card with, right. within a month. Within a month of me turning eighteen, that thing came in the mail. So you're telling me that you can't do the same with voter registration? Yeah. Um. Uh, Rebecca says maybe we should reteach that voting is not just a right, but a responsibility. Yo, you could you could register seniors in high school. We know that every senior pretty much takes an English class. Yeah. When you turn 18. I mean, even in the homeroom. Yeah. As, as a skill. Right there. Let's, let's fill this paperwork out. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. You know I mean, doesn't matter what party, but you just need fill to it be out. civically engaged because you are old enough now. But that's the gas, though, right? Because this is the same country that doesn't even really teach us about the pri proper financial tools, but then encourages us to buy is, a house. Is that a step that high schools could take? Absolutely. And Absolutely. In terms of interjecting themselves into the voting process? Yes. Or, or you know, be, yes. being a conduit to voting? Absolutely. Be, be, because you are, you are educating your, your students about what happens civically in this country. And mm -hmm. they have to be involved. Look, if there's I mean, going Jen, to be sex ed, Jen, if there's Jen's going to be... Here. Huh? Jen, Jen, just Jen, popped Jen just popped up in the chat. Oh, all right. Like, if there's going ask... to be um, um, sex ed, if there's going to be driver's ed... Than, than civics ed or just taking t taking 15 minutes? You one, know, day, one day a year and have all the seniors right, register to vote? Right. If you're over 18, come down to the auditorium. 
We're going to get everyone registered to vote. Whether it's independent, I mean, Republican, or Democrat, I mean, we're going to get you registered I to mean, vote. That go, definitely go, can happen. Go beyond state. that, because everyone if everyone graduating should be a senior should be eighteen within the year. Yeah. Have them all fill it out, right? And then just take it in when it's when your birthday comes up. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I, too. I, I love this as a as a genuine idea to change the politics in your city. Yeah. Absolutely. You have to. You have to. Like like um um it just it uh, uh uh Brittany. Good morning, Brittany. Uh uh she says uh uh we had civics classes. Yo, we did too. Had, I'm sorry, I almost I almost said you have to euthanize voting. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I almost said that. <laughs> but I, I digress. I'm sorry. Uh uh but or um even if we did yeah, like uh, groceries for votes, right? Don't we do like groceries for guns? But when I don't do think like, that people need to be bribed, though. They need to be educated. I, and, oh, I yeah. get, and I get that. But also, the thing is, is that these this is the same entities that, that we're having these CRT debates about. These are the same entities that, you know, don't that want to tell our black children that they were slaves, but don't want to tell white children that, you know, they were kidnappers. Mm -hmm. Right? These are those same entities. And we're going to say, you know, yeah, they're going to do these classes that way. Like, how are they... They're hardly doing it well now. Right. How are we going to really expect them to do it better later? Like what are they, like even today? I think the you most gotta get the I right see, people in. The most that I see the schools do is that they'll have like these uh, PBLs where the kids are voting about something or voting for someone, and that has been the most that I've been able to see as far as um, schools trying to get kids into that mindset of voting and civic engagement. Mm -hmm. They're doing these PBLs on voting. But not all schools do PBLs. Right? So then there's you know, even that system of education isn't even across uh, lady, it's not I'll, the same across the board. I think you're convoluting it. Like it, it, it doesn't need to be that difficult. Like Yeah, like like just 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 get register them to vote. registered. Register like, to vote. Whether you vote or not, it's right. up to you. I'll give you this opportunity to right. register. Now you now you you need to go seek information. Yeah, like like this isn't project-based learning or anything like that. It's it's just getting them registered Be because, to Rebecca's point, can you imagine some of these local school districts wanting to introduce voting education into the school? The school the school board would melt. The shit, like like yeah. like like the Yo, the S show because you know what happens. Be part you of you know what happens in two years. Most of those people on the school board get voted out. Because most of the kids in school don't like what's going on in school. So this is vote. a very interesting conversation that could lead to a lot of real change if it actually ever ever went anywhere. You know, and 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 it's one of those things that like schools. I'm, I'm looking at mostly principals. This is one of those things that you know what um, it is. It, it it may be better to ask for forgiveness than and ask permission. for permission. And it's like, look, this is what we do here. If you're 18, you register you know, to vote. You register to vote. You got this counselor calls you down. Talk about college, military, voting. I, f I feel like that's how you incorporate it into by doing little things like, hey, we're going to vote for this. Hey, we're going to vote for this. You make you show them like each. All right, there is how how many times you vote a year, or how many how many times you how many times do you vote? You do it like that. You yeah. do it like that so that the kids are voting for people. And they're like, oh, well, yeah, hey, I got to vote. I've been voting since I was in school, since I was in elementary school. So now it becomes just a part of them who they right, are now. Right. They're not going to mix voting because, it, hey, this is my even, chance to right. get my voice out there. Right. This is my become, chance to talk yeah. my trash. Yeah, no, so like I, that's, I, that. I feel like that's the best way to do it. And like I'm sure there are teachers doing that, but we have to be – more direct with it, Holistic more intentional approach. with it. Everyone has to be bought yes, in. Yes, yeah, we have it to has keep to be it a going. Full idea. Yeah, like yeah, move it up out, throughout yeah. the systems the same way you do a football program, the same way you do yeah. any kind of other program. Yeah. With math, even with math, I be right. math, I be classes. You got to keep moving up. Development, evolve, development, development everything. We, yeah. we, we, need, we need voter development. We need to enrich our voting, our voting base at a younger age to engage in the pot in, in the process of voting for something. Right? Yeah. Maybe, maybe you don't like the lunch at your school. We vote. Every November on what lunch we want in school. And now you understand this is what we're doing in November. We're voting for something every November. And it really would condition people to look to vote once they get older. I love this yeah. idea. This is really, really that's interesting. All we do uh, is condition. Uh, that's all that's all that's yeah. all teaching is is conditioning our kids. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it's just whitewashing. I that's mean, what I'm like, saying. That's all it's all teaching but is. That's what I'm saying. That's why yeah. we all try try to um try to vacation over the summertime instead of December. Because we're conditioned with 
Summer break, <laughs> go on vacation. Um, uh, Lisa, I I love this idea. Um, yeah. uh, uh, we're going to read this, and then we're going to uh, get to our our fourth story because we definitely were talking about pregnant women, and now we're talking about uh, <laughs> v- uh voting. Um, wow! So, so uh, as we digress, <laughs> right, right, the digress well, it of was the digressions. Like the <laughs> Um, Lisa said, on my 18th birthday, my uh, social studies teacher handed me a voter registration form and told me that was my assignment for the day, and and he mailed it out. That's it right there. Like, that that individualism, you know, that that, that is it right there. Rebecca says, uh, you legally can't give anything for uh, votes or voter registration, and says, this is an amazing idea. Um, Jen says that she loves it, and good morning. And then um, Gary says these are uh, policies, not laws. We can use the laws to challenge policies in court. Uh, Dante says uh, shout out to Marquise for the lobbyist comment the other day. The conversations are happening. I'm glad. I'm glad that they are. And Gary says vote. Yes, yes, yes. And then uh, George says definitely need education. Most local elections have less than 20 percent participation. That's where uh, Majory Green's type come from in politics. Exactly. If we look at, and, and, and I'm specifically looking at Lancaster City and looking at our city council, we, well, not we, but, but, but they <laughs> chose somebody. They handpicked somebody from the northwest part of the city. Why did they choose somebody from the northwest part of the city? Because the northwest part of the city shows out 90% or more for every single election. So then if you have somebody from that part of the city being represented, then what? You have that part of the city in your pocket. Yeah. Because that that person is from that part of the city. That person's parents are from that part of the city. That person's grandparents are from that part of the city. Come on, folks. I'm just preaching today. Just preaching today. Like, Anybody man, else like, want to go? Like, I'm like people don't <laughs> vote other places? Yo. That just, it, that, it felt like an insult. Yo, and you know what I'm saying? Like, yes, we, and I, we can galvanize people to vote if you show them someone who they can vote for. Exactly. And if we get <laughs> like imagine imagine if the um southeast if the south side of but, the city had a 90% showing for but, voting. But think about they, changing they went it, all right? Time. But but think about changing it, right? Think about changing it from 90% only there to 90% in both places. Now, now the voting block changes for real. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, it's yeah, because that's a large that that's a large part of the city now voting. Yeah, typically the city <sighs> only comes out about 45 percent. That's less than half of the city that's not voting. If <laughs> if, if if we would be up to about 80 percent, oh yes, yeah. everything would look different. Everything. That's why, uh, this is why I want to say, like, I feel like this is why drop boxes are important. Them drop boxes Sarge, are important. Bring it important. around. Sorry, I had to. <laughs> <laughs> wherever we go, no matter where we go, like, all right, so you have to work in the morning. Yeah. You can't get, the, you can't get there early. All right, something happens, you got to stay late after work. Mm-hmm. Or, yeah, something, you just missed your, your whole chance to vote because you had to work from this hour to this hour, and then when you got off, you couldn't get here because you had to do this. But you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's horrible. Bring, oh. Yo, um, I hope uh, Senate doesn't pass. I hope it doesn't get passed. Uh, Sarge, you um um you you brought up an interesting thought right there. Um, uh, and, and and we would be naive not to think about this. Bosses preventing their employees from voting, knowing knowing that you know primary day. We already know when primary day is May seventeenth. Right. We already know when election day is. So right. if I'm somebody that leans heavy one way or the other and, 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 and I want some influence, you know, in this area, I want my guy, my woman to get elected. I ain't going to let all these workers go. Well, yo, 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 let overtime. Me, let yo, me do my part. Let me do my part. Everybody working the double. Yo, mandatory. Mandatory like, overtime. Like, right. like, look, find, find a way to vote, but you got to come in and you got to do this 16. You got to do this 12. Like, we would be naive to think that something like that. People aren't that conniving, right? Right. People and aren't this doing why, their part. Right. Yeah. And this is why mail-in ballots, be, be because if a boss tries to do that, then you can uh, counter that with a mail-in ballot, with the drop box and everything like that. Like, we see voting being attacked on many different fronts. 
we'd be naive to think they're not attacking it from the most basic level. Yes. Just keeping you from keeping you from voting, keeping you at yeah. work. Yeah. 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 You know. Uh, uh. So let's uh let's get to our um our fourth story of of the day. <clears throat> um. And this is this is it's crazy. Uh, um. It's it, it's crazy because it's funny, and it's funny because it's crazy. Uh, so, um, lawsuit alleges university scheme to lure black students into debt. Um, a class action suit, a class action suit um, uh, has been filed against Walden University, and this is from um, Black Enterprise. Uh, the lawsuit alleges that the for-profit university had a scheme to lure and trap students in a cycle of debt and despair, particularly those who were black and female. According to the New York Times, the National Student Legal Defense Network is representing the students suing Walden along with civil rights firm Roman Kofax. They allege that the university violated both consumer protection laws and Title IX of the Civil Rights Act by targeting black and female students and misrepresenting the costs and credits needed to obtain an advanced degree. The lawsuit, which was filed in Maryland, states that Walden intentionally elongated the capstone project process by requiring students to re-enroll each semester while paying tuition as they awaited approval from a committee. The suit estimates that the school overcharged students more than $28.5 million. Uh, Walden lured in students with the promise of an affordable degree, then strung them along to increase profits. As if that's not bad enough, Walden specifically targeted black students and women for the predatory program, masking its discrimination as a focus on diversity. I want to um, take that term and, and, and really hone in and concentrate on that because that's, that's a sermon right there. Masking its discrimination as a focus on diversity. Uh, before I get to um, um, uh, that, um, I'm looking at a whole bunch of other uh, uh, Walden type schools. Like there's 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 Everest. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, how many commercials? ITT Tech. Right. Like how many commercials have the we ride. saw? And they'll be like, Hey, you. Yeah, you. Sitting sit on, on the couch. couch. Not doing anything. Life just passing you by. You can get your degree while you're sitting on the couch. Get your degree, man. Yeah. And 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 and, and then they'll have like little uh uh, uh little little Romeo. You know, um, yeah, do a man. cameo and everything like that. So, so like, yes, yes, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm glad the chickens are coming home to roost on these people because we really saw the increase. We really saw the increase during the recession. Saw the increase and the skyrocket. Get your degree, get your degree, change your life and everything. And 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 we saw people trust these entities, much like a Trump University, and they just exploit them and put them in an even more economically dire situation. Sorry. Oh, man. Like, <laughs> keep praying, all right? So a class asking lawsuit was filed in Maryland. Also, I the fact that black women bear the brunt of more than $1.7 trillion in federal student loan debt in America. They're adding on top of this debt. Like, so it's, all right, I'm a doctor, but I have all this debt. Yeah. So for me to get to here... I got to grind, grind, do this, 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 work these crazy hours. Yeah. How can I have a family when I have to work these crazy hours just to pay back all this debt? Yeah. You know what I mean? Some people are for then that's why you see a lot of women, a lot of black women who are forced to sacrifice their families then. You know, they, sac they sacrifice the family life pursuing their dream to be doctors, pursuing their dream to be, you know, their career path. Yeah. You know, so in doing so, they incur so much debt. And then they don't they don't want to start in the world own people. Right. So first thing they do is they want to pay that debt back, but they gotta make the money to pay it back to even live. So yeah. it's you know, these colleges need to be stopped, you know, from Trump University on down. Yeah. Like yeah. some of these schools are some of these schools are I mean, they're they're no different. You know, they're still out scheming, they're out to make money. They're for profit colleges. And it's crazy to think about the the T V colleges that we had as kids that are no longer around. Yeah. Like, why ain't they around? Because they made the money they need to close. Everybody got paid. We good. And they got out before they got caught. Before they got caught. <laughs> right. Uh, Dr. Rick said, come on down to college. Right. Right. No better thing than the real deal. So go on and take it. Lady Al, let's bring you in on this. Listen, when I, so when I had decided to go to college, I literally, like, woke up and was like, you know what? This could be my way to get the heebie-jeebies up out of here. 
And so when I first started <laughs> looking to go to college, I was looking at um, like cosmetology school. I was looking at, um, and I was looking at cosmetology school because for me, I thought, I thought it made sense as a good trade, right? I don't have to go to school for four years. I can come out and know how to do hair and just start making money doing hair. That was my logic. I don't got to stay in school. I'm going, uh, essentially going to learn a trade and go into the workforce. I'm going to stay down her and do her. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so here's what got me. I'm, I'm calling Empire. I'm calling these beauty schools. And um, I'm calling Empire. I'm calling these beauty schools. And they're like, oh, well, yeah, you know, it costs this much to come. And da, 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 da. And I'm like, well, what about, like, the student loan programs? Like, I filled out my FAFSA and everything like that. And as they're explaining to me that they don't do that, they don't do the student loans, they don't do FAFSA, they don't do any of those things. To me, that was a red flag. That was a straight red flag to me because I'm like, that's what college is. Like, that's how everybody pays for college. And if your college isn't taking those funds, I can't go. <laughs> right? And that's how I ended up at a four-year university studying social work. But, and, and so here's the thing, right? So with Walden and their strategies, right, they were... They almost use like how real estate use redlining not to give us housing. They use that redlining to to target their own students. Oh, you live in a poor community. Oh, you gotta you live. Oh, these people live like this. They have you know this kind of income. Put our commercials there. Put our signs in those bodegas. Yeah. Put our stuff over there. Right. It it said that um the one student they pulled they they. They said she said that um let me be be more specific. So Carol, um, one of the students, she had to complete a capstone project after coursework. Yet when she would turn it into the university's review committee, she would be subjected to long waits for minor feedback. Ultimately, the degree took Carol three years to complete and tens of thousands of additional dollars. So here's the thing. The lawsuit notes that one of Walden's main strategies was to stretch out the capstone project. <laughs> was to stretch it out, which forced students to re-enroll for another semester as they waited on decisions from the three-member panel to get their degrees for the capstone projects. Come on now. <laughs> it's okay, though, because Walden made about an extra $28 million by doing this. They need to come at um, uh, regular schools too, because like 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 yo, um, you want to talk about stretching out stuff? Like okay, they stretched out their uh, their um, uh, they uh they 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 stretched out their capstone, but um, regular colleges definitely stretch out their gen eds. First like one, yo, well, I'm yo, not spending the first uh, two years taking all these classes that I don't need. Offering it every other semester? Yeah, yo. That part. I oh, only a, on Wednesdays. I took an Sorry. intro to the pop culture class. Took an intro to pop culture class. Why? Why? Like Did the I teacher knows more about class? pop culture than you. Yo. Terrible. Why? And then, then, then like, Shippensburg had, like, your, it, it was so weird. They had, like, your A track, B track, C track, D track. And you, if, if, if you're in this major, then you have to get, um, uh, two gen eds from the A track, three gen eds from the B track. So, so intro, intro to pop culture was in the E track, and and like, um, if you were a journalism major, you needed three credits from the E track. And I'm looking, and I'm like, this has nothing to do with nothing. I took a glorified gym class. Took a glorified <laughs> gym class. Paid for a glorified yeah, gym. Yes, yes. Paid for a glorified gym class. Like Sarge. Like. Like it's 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 we need to come at these um regular colleges because uh, uh again these these gen and eds some of the classes they offer like why am I taking gym in college? Yo, ridiculous. Now now on the flip side, I'm glad I took psychology one oh one. I'm glad I took sociology one oh one. Right, but you don't need gym in I, college. No, no. Aced it too. Thank you for the GPA. Bro. Right. <laughs> I got D's they, list. They, they, they want niggas to get A's, so take you know? a take a gym, get this A. <laughs> but first of all, you paid for that. <laughs> I paid for that A. <laughs> you paid for that A. Let's stop acting like you did. All right, yeah. you paid for it. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's because you had the money to pay for it. Uh, well, all right, like, the money. 
<laughs> like speaking of these colleges, so from 1980 to 2019, college costs have increased by 169 percent over the past four decades, while earnings for workers between the ages of 22 and 27 have increased by just 19 percent. Mm. Yo, no, no. So these colleges, these big colleges and universities, yeah, they're they're in on it too. Yeah. They've been in on it. They're just doing it funny. Like, <laughs> yeah. look at you, little guys. You guys started too late. Yeah. Like, we already had history. We had brick and mortar buildings. That's why we can do it. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man. I love this comment. We've just been jerking people way before yeah. the, the, the for profits existed. I, I love that um, my sister put on here. She says, going through this now, before I got accepted, they told me it was an 18 month program. 12 months in, they tell me I have two what? more years. And I already have a bachelor's degree. Currently taking religion, I'm here for healthcare management. Yeah, there you go, amen. What? <laughs> Yo, I'm sorry. Yo, you, you there you go. You got to lose that money. <laughs> hey, you, you pay. You paid for nothing. Yo, walk walk away. Currently taking religion. What? There for healthcare management. Maybe you need the Lord. <laughs> I'd be so mad to know Yo, more I would be about so mad. caring for health. Tell me I need two more years. I'm 12 months into an 18-month program. And then already years. have a degree? But maybe you have to learn every different religions for different health management. Yeah, yeah. nah. I got nothing. Nah, Yo. right. Yo. Seminary school ain't that low. <laughs> right, and that's, and that's so strange because, I, I, I mean, normally a lot of times when you sign up for programs, I mean, at least for me, when I signed up for my MBA program, they, it, I had a list of all the classes that I was going to have to take, and this is what it looks like. Yeah, start to finish. Yeah, yeah. map it out for you. yeah. But that's for those advanced degree programs. Like like for 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 my degree at um at Morgan State, like they they had a map. Like from start to finish, they gave me five five maps. Here's what you can do. Map one, map two, map three, map four, map five. And what I did, I took a little bit of map three, took a little bit of map one, took a little bit of map five, and I was like, boom, this is gonna be Marquis Lupton's map. But but like they they gave me a blueprint right. to get in, get out. This is what it looks like. So, like, I knew this is what I was timeline. Take. This right. is where you should be by this point. If you're exactly. not here, you got to readjust. Yeah, but man. I, I, I knew what I was going to take three semesters from now. Right. Because they gave me that 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 map. So, like, the fact that you know that's not happening um, on the uh, um, undergraduate level, it's an indictment. But also, these colleges know, especially the Shippensburg. A lot of kids ain't going to graduate from Exactly, there. which is why I think that they have we, programs. We don't need a map. Right. Let them fail. That's also why I think they have those programs like the prep program yes, and just about like to say that, that. Uh -huh. that don't actually offer any supportive services for students who have never been, ain't even probably thought about going to college, and you take them out of these inner cities. I'm talking Philly, Pittsburgh, yes. Baltimore. You're taking them out of these, these inner cities and saying, all right, here you go, do well in college. Put and in the it's middle like, of nowhere. Right, with no supports, no no black adult mentors. You can't even get uh, hair products. <laughs> you can't even get lotion. Yeah. Right, like no nothing. Like you're bringing these students into a foreign place and you're saying be successful. Yeah. With no support, with no kinship. Yeah. Go ahead and do it. And there's a number of us who find ways to make it happen, yeah. even if we're halfway dead, you know, walking down the graduation aisle. You know, we're trying to do it, but there's a number of us that they're not putting in all of those supports. Essentially, and like like we're building a bridge, right? And, and, and building bridges, triangles help the most, help give it the most strength. And they're not building those triangles to support these black and brown kids going off to college, which is why programs like Walden take advantage. Exists, right. Oh, you want to go to college? You want to change your environment? You can graduate with this tech degree and start making $90,000. Yeah. Well, why didn't nobody tell me that I could have gone to Thaddeus and Stevens 18 years ago? It did the same thing. Uh, Brittany. Brittany says, um, I want to say F that class so bad, but it feels like a sin. That's how they got you. <laughs> Brittany, let me tell you this. I said F that class for four years for religion in Lancaster Catholic. Um, when I meet my maker, I'm going to let him know it wasn't my religion. So you can say the same thing, sis. <laughs> can I, I just want to read eight major U.S. colleges and universities that uh, closed abruptly. Mm. Uh, Brown Mackey College, ITT Technical Institute, Allied American University, Antonelli Institute, Springfield, 
Harrison College, Duluth Business University, Duluth. Savannah Law School, and Kaplan University. So I mean, uh, Kaplan. you know, Kaplan um, shut down. Wh- yeah. Why? Wait, you know the people that what? pay for us for the college board exams. <laughs> Yeah, no, the, y- the YTI, Lancaster campus shut down abruptly in the middle of a semester. Really? Yeah, it was terrible. Yo, yo, Kaplan, there's there's some PhDs out there that got uh, 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 Kaplan PhDs. They should be revoked. And your job. <laughs> Sounds like I'm hating. Just a little bit. Why? They didn't get caught, <laughs> they didn't get caught yet. <laughs> um, uh, Venus says, uh, Susquehanna said, uh, you have four years, eight semesters. Get in and get out. They were trying to keep us from debt. Uh, they did not play with us. You may have gotten a nice semester, but no. I also worked at a private uh, that said if you don't finish in eight semesters and it's on us, they pay for the rest. Yep. That just seems like right. Right. That just that, and 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 Shippensburg, Shippensburg had something similar to that. They had a red plan and they had a blue plan, like like it was the Matrix. You know, um, if you have the red plan, you get out in three and a half years. If the blue plan, you get out in four years. Like, like literally, literally. But it was like year-round school, taking taking 18 credits over the summer, everything like that. Like, nah, son. Nah. Uh, no, no, it's still summertime. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, um, uh, uh, folks, let's um, uh, let's get to um, our our next story here as we uh, keep on matriculating. Oh, we're uh, we gonna keep matriculating. We're gonna keep on matriculating. Oh, is that, oh, speaking of matriculating, yo, it's time for matriculating. It's time for trick late. I just want to wow. say it's time for trick late. <laughs> DJ, hit that beat, bro. Hit that beat. I wish I could this find it. I'm looking for it. You're not watching it. Fox and you're watching us on Facebook, right? I know. Welcome. Welcome. This is this is black excellence. <laughs> so with that being uh, said. Even in the first year of the pandemic, we're talking about trickling, right? Right. No, we weren't talking about trickling? Yes. Something like that. Matriculating. All right. Matriculating. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, yeah. So even in all that matriculating, I just want to say... Just don't matriculate yourself. Yeah, all, all on your, your matriculation. Right. Yeah, because, you know, in the first year of the pandemic, the STD rates continue to climb in the U.S. That's because all of that matriculation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> need to matriculate alone. Wait. Like, look, don't breathe on me. <laughs> <laughs> How are we spreading uh, STDs? Because they were houses. wearing a mask and not a condom. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. The CDC reported 2.4 million STD cases in oh, 2020, man. slightly less than in 2019. Do better. The CDC noted <laughs> STD cases may have gone unreported and actually increased due to the COVID-19 precaution. <laughs> uh, chlamydia rates, though, they were down in the U.S., but gonorrhea and syphilis cases rose over the 2020 year. Lord. So the first year of the pandemic greatly affected the amount of reported cases. On Tuesday, the CDC said reported cases of STDs declined during the first few months after the pandemic was declared in March 2020. But then resurged in the later months in the year. In total, there were 2.4 million reported STD cases in the U.S. in 2020, slightly below the 2.5 million reported cases in 2019. However, some cases surpassed records set in 2019, and the CDC says it doesn't paint the full picture of the year as early trends show the record was on pace to be broken. Oh, man, there you go, America. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to lead the way in something, aren't we? (laughs) So COVID-19 significantly affected trends in STDs during 2020, resulting in likely underreporting of infections and possibly increased STD transmissions. It is likely that such effects will persist for several more years, and we may never know the full impact of the pandemic on STDs. What is clear, however, is that the state of the STDs did not improve in the United States. The CDC says factors contributing to the decrease in cases in the early months of the pandemic were because of reduced limited resources. Many healthcare clinics closed or limited in-person visits to symptomatic STD patients. But you can be a symptomatic STD patient. <laughs> I say, man. That, that, that. How does that work? You're not talking to me. I don't know anything How does about that work? this conversation. You kiss me. Oh, dang, I got STD. <laughs> like, like, uh, like. <laughs> <laughs> right. I got HIV symptoms today. So, uh, what? Like, how does that work? But asymptomatic patients 
they like they likely weren't diagnosed or treated as the medical world shifted its focus on COVID nineteen. Uh, so if you're asymptomatic and you're just like, man, well, wait, so you can be asymptomatic with STDs? Yeah, dog. This yeah, world, yeah, yeah. This, yeah. this is yeah. You're, you're, it's a setup. Yo, it's a setup. You're like, wait, what? Well, okay, whatever. <laughs> I couldn't tell. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I love you, babe. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? I thought that was gushy, not syphilis. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, thought, I thought you had that cream. <laughs> not that cheese. Not that clap. <laughs> Mac and cheese. Jeez. More like cottage cheese. My goodness. But anyway, moving on. So, um, like many, the COVID-19 altered the sex lives of millions throughout the world. A 2021 study noted 26% of single people reported more sex, while those in relationships were higher, with 40% reporting more sex. Wait a minute. So wait, you had all these single people, and you had all these people in relationships were doing it. A red record. Does that mean that means yes, single yes, in does. relationship people were? Yep. Ow. Oh. Yep. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> At least the chlamydia. Clap it up for the clap. <laughs> chlamydia cases are down. They remain the most. Re- wait, chlamydia cases are down, but they remain the most reported in uh, in the U.S. With 1.5 million cases reported to the CDC in 2020, and of those, 60% were reported were reported in adolescents and young adults ages 15 to 24. So, despite the high number of cases, data showed it was a 13% drop. Uh, gonorrhea and syphilis cases rise. A total of 677,769 cases of gonorrhea were reported in 2020, making it the most common STD in the U.S. That was a 5.7% jump from 2019 and a 111% jump since 2009. By the end of April 2020, the number of reported cases were already higher than 2019. Syphilis had a 6.8% jump in reported cases in 2020 with 133,945 cases in 2020. Oh, boy. And uh, America isn't taking the STD crisis seriously. I believe it. So the of course, national you hear us on, on, on here making jokes about it. No, look at us. <laughs> Terrible. We must be asymptomatic. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> bang, bang. Gang, gang. But anyway, in March, the coalition sent a letter to President Joe <laughs> Biden about its concerns regarding funding to address the issue. Uh, this affirms once again that America isn't taking the STD, the STD crisis seriously. Uh, we can only fight this out of control epidemic with new funding and the kind of urgency that reflects the enormity of this crisis. Harvey alluded to the dramatic rise of uh, congenital syphilis, saying he can't imagine seeing the 235 <coughs> cases since 2016 and not having the federal government put a stop to it. The CDC said the pandemic still is impacting STD program resources and it is unsure what the future outlook of it is. But there's no reason to believe we will be back to business as usual with the STD cases report reporting anytime soon. Um, I do want to say, like, uh, would you take this seriously? Uh, when it comes to STD, I wish there were. I wish they did. They did bring back the impact groups for schools. Yeah. You know, I wish they didn't. They didn't make sex so like so tabooish. Like yep. make it seem like it's so dirty. Like kids aren't doing about it with kids. Yeah. Like kids aren't discovering kids. Kids have phones in their hands. Right. They have access. They can look it up. Like I'm sure they're saying, like. T- send T- pictures to each other like T- there's TV's that, not hiding it. Yeah, like, have you been to a middle school when they let out of school? Have you been to a middle school and heard the way these kids talk? Yes. yes. Have, you, have, you, have you heard the language? Yeah. Yes. Like, they, they say some things around adults that I would never have said around adults when I was a kid. I would have. That's because you were. Yeah. You were, but, ooh. But, yep. but also, Double you know, um, um, at least, at least they know, at least they know. What an obtuse triangle is. Yeah. <laughs> you know, at but, least they know, but, you but know. Not, but not what it means to be obtuse. Uh, right, right, right. <laughs> they know They know what an acute angle is. Like, they know what the uh, Pythagorean theorem is. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. But don't know how to put on a condom. Like, like, yeah. Schools are doing a great job. You know great what job. sucks, though, is that, I mean, Planned Parenthood was always an option to come into schools and talk to the kiddos about stuff. They just had to get past all the protesters. Yeah, that part. Um, (laughs) Fun fact, fun fact, in 2020, there was a 15% increase in syphilis among newborns. Y'all done gave the baby the STI. Y'all are doing the most. Y'all are doing the most. So here's the thing. 
we know that STIs are a thing here in America, and we've known it for years, and our solution to it has been don't ask, don't tell. That, that's, that's really the solution to STDs here in America. Don't ask, don't tell. But if you come to me and you have a cold sore on your face, I will promise you, I will tell you that you, you, got, <laughs> you got it, right? What now, were you eating? Right, so now here's the thing, though, but here's the thing. These are taboo conversations that should not be taboo. They yep. shouldn't be taboo. The school needs to um, have a, a portion of responsibility as the educational institution. They are looked at by parents as some sort of education professionals. So the expectation is that they're going to learn about sex and sexual health from the schools. And also from the parents, there's a part of like relationship building and, and, and the social aspect of it that you should probably learning at home, right? Because your teachers can't tell you about picking a mate and choosing somebody to give your body to. But that's a conversation that you're probably gonna have with your mom or your dad, right? It, it, so it, it's crazy. I, I, I don't understand why no one's doing anything. Again, everybody knows I'm from Philly. Since 05, I graduated high school in 05, so since about 05, maybe even 04, the school district of Philadelphia has been testing high school students all across, all at every high school, across the city, every year. Then not only did they test students, but then they, um, they treated them. And everything was under wraps, nobody even knew. So much so that in the last couple, in the last 10 years, they started telling parents that they're doing this because the parents didn't know. This, it was something that the district decided needed to be done and they did something about it. And what we found out was that they're about, you know, like, 8,000 students, eight to 10,000 students every year that they treat for STIs in the school district. They're being preventative. You know, they're sitting up here trying to, to, to help mitigate these things. So who else is, is looking at this? Who else is looking to mitigate this? What other city entities or institutions can help with this? Or do we say, well, sex is a private matter, so you getting a clap is your private business. <laughs> <laughs> Over to the desk. Uh, <clears throat> Uncle Gary says, uh, I was told that they have a major problem at the senior living facilities down in Florida at the villages, senior single uh, swingers. I'm going to get to that uh, 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 comment after uh, I read these other three. <laughs> Uh, George says, uh, damn, COVID, COVID kit, got to have a uh, uh, mask, home test, and Trojans now. Yo, on that note, they won't do Trojans. They'll do like Durex. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> That's, but, but yeah, but yeah, uh, uh, Venus says, uh, babies can't even get a head start. And then says, call me crazy, but I look at the STD stats when I move to an area. Tell me what's really going on. Um, yeah, yeah, we do too. We look at, uh, uh, uh. The um, black statistics, seeing how many black people are there. We look at um, STDs just to see how nasty people are. Um, and, and, and we look at um, the educational um, um, part part of it as well. To see, are our kids going to be okay? Right. And we look and see where the school ranks at with the state and the county. Right. And it's like, well, we can't live over here. House is beautiful. School is trash. Right. Next, uh, please. Um, and, um, and back to... Um, Back to Uncle Gary's point. Uh, I did a story uh, in in Jersey um, uh, about um, uh, the clap uh, and and uh, herpes running rampant in senior homes in southern New Jersey, and that's because they all sleep with each other. Like they're <laughs> they're, they're what young kid? What, what younger was in there that gave it to him though to pass around? No, no they I give it to they, each other. They, 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 they like 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 they. They came in with it. Came in with they're it. they're the generation that really didn't use condoms like that anyway. Like these are our hippies. These are our sixties, seventies people. You know, hey, spread love and all that stuff. And they're still doing that. <laughs> like they're 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 they're. they're was really a lifestyle. Yes, <laughs> that they never gave up. And just because they're in the senior living center now, that just. just Right, it's just next door now. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, 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 yo, they, 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 they still want to get it in, and and they are in their 60s, 70s, and 80s, and they're like, I'm not dead. I still like to get 
pleasured. Can't stop. And Won't I'm stop. going to get pleasured until I can't get pleasured no more. That was the direct I, I quote. Will, I will pleasure myself to death before I stop getting pleasure. Yo, yo. And, <laughs> and it's like, yes, they're not dead, so they want a little genitalia loving. Yes. Right. Yes. And they should. Yeah, exactly. And to Rebecca's point, there's no fear of pregnancy. <laughs> no fear of pregnancy. Yo, that, I think that's why the Bust rates have increased. All in the club. Shooting all the clubs. Right. Right. Okay. That's why they're spreading that. Yes. 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 Right, it's the cool. fear of pregnancy, man. But, but also, I, I think that there was a lot of times when we look at STI stats and stuff, a lot of the age ranges between like 15 and 44. So if we're talking about a senior community center, a lot of those sets would never impact them. Those were the, the, the baby boomers and those the generation ahead of them. They were never really classified really as like having these STDs or anything like that. Nobody was looking at them. Yeah. Nobody yeah. was looking at them until the nursing staff, the CNAs, and the doctors at the nursing home was like, how did you get Mr. Johnson? <laughs> and then it became a thing like, oh, oh snap, old oh, people having sex. What did you think Cialis and Viagra was for, y'all? <laughs> it's a dormitory. It is a dormitory. Of grown people. It's a dormitory. And you know what happened in the dorms. Everybody that went to college, you you at any given time, you can see some beads, a sock, or some kind of memorabilia on a door letting you know, don't come a knocking because the room is rocking. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's so so then uh, we would be come naive. in, bring the drink with you, right? <laughs> and there was a chance of getting pregnant then. Huh? Yeah, right. So you take out pregnancy. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, I'm 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 knocking on doors, chopping down trees. Hashtag lumberjack. And that's the problem though, because we've only really been taught to fear pregnancy, right? Because now with places like Texas saying, "Well, you can't have an abortion," it's like, oh well, now I might have to actually really wear a condom. But nobody was concerned if they had that same level of concern about an STD. And it's like, the baby is forever. Some of these STDs are too. <laughs> Take but you're STD only worried you. about, you know. I thought only Wu-Tang was forever. Well, look, so <laughs> here's the thing, STDs. though. There is some advice, though. So here's the thing. Here's what Herpes, we want you to do. If the state's not going to pay for it, here's the thing. Choosing one partner and agreeing to be sexually active with only each other is still important that you and your partner get tested for STDs and HIV and share your test results with one another before engaging in coitus. And so, that is a thing that people are that people so do. So marriage? So the article is saying y'all should just get married. No, they're saying that you you and your partner make an agreement to just sleep with each other for the rest of your life. Uh, un until further notice, if we are exclusively mutual of our bodies with one another. Here are your results. Here are my results. And it's just the two of us on, for the next, you know, umpteen months. Sounds like marriage. Definitely yeah, sounds nah. like marriage. <laughs> it sounds like marriage. <laughs> Lady L, did we not exchange STD results? And then we said, you know what? You're my forever person I'm going to lay with. <laughs> did we not do that same thing? Similar to that effect. Okay, yes. It was a whole ceremony in front I of God. That. Hold on, listen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, all right, so we're about to give a book away. We're about to hear this love story. Finally, I've been waiting for it. <laughs> all right, we got to get give it. Give a book. On vacation. Give a book, son. I want to give, give you a book. Give a book. Love takes time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for getting that story out. Yeah. I'm so happy you told the story, yo. Let's go. Let's get it out. Let's go. Standing ovation. Been a long Standing time. ovation. Been a long time, yo. Yes. <laughs> yes. Been waiting for this moment. Oh. Wait, can you go on to finish the rest of it like, right before the results? Like, what led up to the results? <laughs> I just want to know. I just want to go there. Let's start right there. Well, you know, we were young. <laughs> I wanted to make sure that we kept each other safe. You know, he was a frat boy. Oh. So, you know, we just... Just wanted to do do it right. All right. You know? But also, they also so look, say another marry option. You, but another option is pee in this cup. <laughs> <laughs> it's not what I'm gonna marry you, but pee in this cup. It's oh. not a but. It's I want to marry you and pee in this cup. All right. No. Hold on, because if the results came back something different, then what? Is there no marriage? Wedding off. But why? 
You guys didn't take it before. You, did you guys take a test before you guys ever engaged in any physical activity? No, no. Exactly. No, no. That's what I'm saying. But we did it before we spent the rest of our lives together, yep. and it's hilarious because I, I still get tested over the. We've been together 17 years now, Wait till the door and I still close. get tested over the years. And I'm like, hey, you gonna go and get tested? And he's like, aren't you tested? <laughs> whatever you got, I got. If you're clean, I'm clean. Whatever it is, I, right? You know. If I don't have anything, then then uh, Whitney, thank you. <laughs> because if I, I do have something. <laughs> Then, Whitney, thank you. Then, 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 I'm, then I'm looking at you cause, because I'm not out here dipping. I, I, I know, I know. So, so, so if I got the Whatever. bang bang there's butcher, some, there's some blonde haired blue eyed devil on the comments right now, lurking, looking. I know. Oh, no, oh, they shoot. are they not. Lurking, looking. They are Just not. Serve. They are not worried about me. And 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 Brittany, <laughs> yes, 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 Brittany, thank you, thank you. That's that twin connection. Damn, Truth, truth she don't out. trust you, bro. <laughs> right, right, right. Right. Nah, uh, she wait. Your sister was a, a your sister. Your brother was a frat boy. Let's be honest. Like, Why do you say he was? Like was. past term. Right. You still see like, the you diamond on my right. 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 You, right. you still see. I just ain't dipping. Right. And as that, <laughs> just ain't doing that no more. Right. Is watching, <laughs> I want all the smoke. <laughs> I want it's, it all. And, and, and Keith will tell you his wife carries the gun. They, they, That's they, probably one of the biggest reasons. They she carries are, a gun. That's they are <laughs> not. They are not worried about Quiet Storm. There are. There are. You know what? I'm not even going to do that to y'all. Nobody's right. worried about nobody on this program. Not at everybody's all. just worried about the news. That's right. Because we ain't even got look. We don't even look good. Oh, funny, Rebecca, I, don't you do that? Damn it! Look, I don't know. Don't you look, do that? She made it so that I can't even see what it says. So I don't even know. Oh, see Rebecca it. blocked you. What? <laughs> look, oh no no no! It's, oh, that blonde haired blue eyed. Y'all see. Oh my God! <laughs> she said with no lube. I can't see it on my iPhone either. Yo. But, um, but, yes, uh, Brittany, yes, Brittany. Brittany I'm a frat uncle. uncle. I'm not a frat boy. I'm a frat uncle. I love that. Yes, yes. You a frat daddy? I'm a frat daddy. There you go. You a frat daddy? There you go. All my sons. You know, I I I don't even live vicariously through them. I just say, you know what? Take care of yourself, young man. You know that. You know that gotcha is out there. Make sure you wrap it up twice. When you're peeing, you're like, ah! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. Uh, uh, but, um, but you know, like, like Rebecca said, oh, that's a good husband. Yes, yes, indeed, yes, indeed. Pat myself on the back. Trust my dopeness. That's because mm. he knows it's still death do us part. Ooh. Ooh. So either you want God to put you in the ground, or you want me to do it. Oh, oh my gosh. Listen, and, this, and this, this is going to remind us. Listen, let's talk about toxic relationships. You're not putting that on camera. You're not, you're, you're not going to do that on camera. <laughs> Listen, toxic relationships are a thing, all right? Oh, uh, right. If you feel like you have to run, run. Yo. <laughs> Yo, look. America, if you see me blink twice, know that I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Fred! Oh, man. So um, uh, so we have about uh, 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 20 minutes uh, left. In the program, uh, we're going to get to our our, our next story, uh, which which is uh, kind of disgusting. Um, Rideshare apps accused of uh, surcharging after New York City subway attack. Um, so let's get to our uh, sixth story then. Oh, all right, that's me. That's me. All right, so uh, yeah, Rideshare apps accused of surcharging after New York City subway attack. So officials are investigating after someone released a canister of smoke and open fire in a Brooklyn subway station during rush hour Tuesday morning. Authorities say at least 29 people were injured, 10 of, 10 of them from gunfire. After the incident, New Yorkers used Uber and Lyft, uh, started surcharging in the Brooklyn neighborhood where the incident occurred as people attempted to leave the area. Oh, snap. I mean, like, I'm, I'm talking about people were going, like, five minutes away, and they were charging them, like, $70. Um, and so now my screen is not working. Um, but, yeah. All right. So can we kick it over to the other yep. desk while I get this handled, please? Yep. Um, uh, so uh, the, the um, attack occurred at the 36th Street Station in the Sunset Park neighborhood. Uh, the attacker was wearing a construction vest and put on a gas mask before opening a uh, smoke canister and shooting. Once the end train doors opened, uh, smoke rushed into the train 
Commuters rushed out of the train with many entering another train that was sitting across on the platform. Um, police officials say the gunman escaped, but they were able to retrieve a gun uh, they found at the station. And this was uh, reported by the New York Times. Uh, so um, in the aftermath of the incident, both Uber and Lyft were accused of applying surcharges on rides. Several New Yorkers took to Twitter to complain about ride prices. Fair surge after a mass shooting in Brooklyn when subways are shut down, one user wrote, with a screenshot of $85 of a $85 ride to Manhattan. Uh, didn't see anything but shooting surge pricing in, in at Lyft. Um, uh, one user even called out Uber for turning on surge pricing amid the emergency situation and says, at Uber, turn off surges in Sunset Park. People are scared. Let them get out safely. Uh, both Uber and Lyft have since uh, suspended sur surcharge pricing in the neighborhood. And, um, and according to the New York Post, Freddie Goldstein, a spokesperson for Uber, said the company will distribute refunds to anyone in the vicinity who experienced uh, surcharging on the app. But how does that even happen, though? Like, Uber, you saw the news. You saw the news. You said, oh, goodness, people are going to need to get the heebie-jeebies up out of there. Let's add in some more money for anybody that's coming from that location, right? Because your phone tells you where, your phone lets them know where you are. You did that on purpose. Freddie Goldstein, you're saying this because you got called out, because you got caught, because the people were, were, were adding your business on Twitter. Yeah. That's what happened. And then to say, oh, well, you know, refunds will be dispersed. Why? Why were you giving surcharges in the first place? Especially in an emergency situation, if anything, the ride should have been equal to the charge of the train ride. Because I'm obviously catching the train to save money. We're, talk, we're talking about, we're talking about a, a $2.50 train ride. And now I gotta take a car. That, that in itself is an astronomical price difference. And it, it's crazy because following the incident, Uber disabled the surcharge pricing in the vicinity and cap pricing citywide. If anyone on our platform experienced unintended charges during this emergency, we will work to get them refunded. And I wonder what that work to get it refunded looks like. And how long will that take? Will it take? Exactly. Um, at the most basic, um, it shows that, uh, that, that Uber and Lyft um, has, has an algorithm. Uh, that that kicks in when when trains shut down um, at, at at the most basic um, I'm be, because um, I'm gonna try to look at this uh, gla glass half full um, um, and 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 not think that they were like oh there was a shooting um, let's charge these people but rather like a train was disabled and then that's when they're yeah the computers made it they, since the computers did it it makes it okay I I, I mean no 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 yeah. no no it doesn't at all because that's this that's still disgusting because it shows that um that's continuously going mm -hmm. to happen regardless why is that the work model like why is the why is that the model for the algorithms right like why be. why is like prime time when people have to get places do you want to charge the most More. money right yeah, that, like that, why like you're gonna that, make money like people everybody's traveling that like, happens during peak like, times of the day yeah it happens right. it happens everywhere like peak time like peak times like say you got to get to work you're running late your car breaks down oh you got to get a lift yeah. All right, well, let's add, let's put some salt in that wound and let's charge you this much money just to get there. Yeah, right. because it's business hours. Yeah, exactly. Like, yep, yep. yep. You ever you ever look at Lyft at like at one time point and then you look at it like, let's say you decide not to order and you look at it 20 minutes later, it's up $15, $20. Yep. And it's like, hey, we should have did this earlier. Like, we'll sit up here and compare Uber. And, so I, I like Lyft, Marquise likes Uber. And we'll compare prices, and we'll decide which ride share app we're going to take. Yeah. And that's just that's just what it is. Lyft be winning a lot, don't it? Yeah, yeah. Lyft, uh, yeah. Uh, then, uh, uh, then, then, if you think about um, uh, sporting events, like sporting events, major sporting events has has surcharges as well, has surcharging as well. When I go down to Philly and and, and go to um, a basketball game or, or go to Xfinity Live, like it is significantly more. In and around Stadium Row, 
than it is up <laughs> by um um her dad's house. Even 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 sporting venues though, like they charge more for good games. Yeah. You know oh saying? my goodness, you should see them prices. I try to stay up to date on Sixers tickets because I keep wanting to surprise my husband with some. And every time I think that they're playing a team he wants to see, them tickets, I'm like, oh, they playing oh. LeBron James. I'm like, oh glory. You got you got to get got them. You got to get them when they play Orlando. <laughs> <laughs> so I, got, I, got, I need to wait till LeBron James get on the and one team. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. It's too much. You know, um, uh, so um, so folks, we are um, um, we are going to uh, uh, keep it moving to our seventh story uh, 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 of the day, which will uh, most likely be our last story, um, uh, and. Um, and I'm going to uh, kind of switch things up, up a little bit and uh, focus. Since we uh, started talking about um, uh, frat boys and everything like that, frat uncles and whatnot, um, uh, historically, black sorority and fraternity um, plots vandalized at Howard University. Um, an investigation is underway uh, after, after uh, historical markers related to uh, Delta Sigma Theta, Alpha, uh, Alpha Kappa Alpha, and uh, Kappa Alpha Psi were recently vandalized. Um, news recently broke that numerous historically black sorority and fraternity sites were vandalized at Howard University and people want answers. The Howard community discovered the uh, defacement early, earlier yesterday and they swiftly began decrying the vandalism online. Additionally, photos began circulating showing the extent of the matter and garnering attention on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, the pictures shown uh, how unknown vandals deface historical markers associated with organizations within the Divine Nine. Uh, the specific organizations targeted, again, were uh, Alpha Kappa Alpha, Delta Sigma Theta, and Kappa Alpha Psi. At least three plots on the university yards have been destroyed in what we are calling a disgusting HBCU hate crime. Uh, uh, the university is aware that some of the Divine Nine Greek letter organization plots located on the main yard have been defaced. These senseless acts of vandalism are unacceptable and run contrary to the values of respect and tolerance that was an institution uh, to strive to uphold. Uh, university police are currently investigating the matter and searching for suspects. Uh, the matter comes on the hills of Howard University and many other HBCUs throughout the country receiving bomb threats. Notably, the FBI revealed from January 6th to February 16th 57 HBCUs, uh, uh, places of worship, and faith-based institutions received threats. Um, as, as Blavity previously re reported, some of the most recent uh, threats were against Norfolk State, Elizabeth City State, and Dillard University. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, um, this was something that was always um, a thought of mine, especially when uh, Morgan... Uh, added added back their their plots, you know, um, and, and it really made me think like, you know, nobody has ever vandalized these things, you know, uh, uh, even even somebody that you know may have been denied um, um, access to to said frat or to said sorority. There was never any 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 backlash or anything like that, and I, I quickly came to the conclusion, no. Because there, there was that level of respect. Even somebody that was denied or, or somebody that dropped, mm -hmm. there's still that level of respect that I'm not going to deface the property of this group. Now, when we talk about uh, um, other, other groups of folks that, that, that may not know the traditions of, of uh, 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 black letter organizations um, uh, or, or even um, a younger generation, you know, I could really see this uh, um, playing out. Um, but I would be ignorant to think that uh, this wasn't a uh, racial hate crime because it's followed, it, it's followed by all of those bomb threats. And as we see, we know that this, comp uh, this company, this country, with its hatred, likes to copycat its hatred. Well, I was going to say, um, isn't it wonderful that the government allowed HBCUs to apply for grant money for additional security measures since the bomb threats. How about that? This is this would then be, you know, if they they, if they applied and got the money, they would then have their security personnel on campus be able to better investigate. 
And I, I haven't been on a college campus, I don't know, maybe like eight months. But I could have sworn that there were cameras all over college campuses. Camp and, and this happened in the main choir. Not a not a tree light post or no, nobody nothing has a camera over there. After a few years ago, Howard had issues with the gentrification happening outside of campus in their in their local community, and the neighbors walking on their campus, walking on the grass, letting their dogs crap on the grass. You know who I'm talking about? All of that had happened. Right, and so they needed to put stuff in place to let the community members know, like, these are rules of engagement if you're coming onto our campus. And I'm just, I just don't understand how, you know, there's nothing, there, nothing on camera, nobody coming into the campus, nobody walking out of the campus, nobody in or around the main quad. Like, it, 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 it just doesn't, it, it's too many questions unanswered at this point in time for me. That just doesn't make sense, especially considering that you just had multiple bomb threats. Yeah. You just had issues with your professors about to walk out. You just got yourselves together after your students protested last year. And now you got this. Like, I just, Howard got more problems than the law allow. And that, that's just where the school's at right now. They just got so, so many things going on. Um, but I, I hope that, I mean, if anything, put up some Nest cameras, some Ring doorbell cameras, something. Like, I, we're too technologically savvy in this, in this day and age to not have something on camera to what really happened. Gentlemen. Look, there were no explosions found, but there were 57 historical black colleges and universities and houses of worship that were targeted by the bomb threats. All right, March, March 16th, uh, we, we did a story. We did a story on the grant money that the HBCUs were getting that yeah. received bomb threats all right, and that extra security. And we sat down and we, we talked about the numbers and how much some of that money is going to equate to. And some of it's more like two, two officers to schools, you know, this and that. But, like, there was no real, nothing really big done, nothing really big that was done. Yeah. So this continues to show, like, the flaws. And it shows, like, the pitfall. How can there be something like this that can happen when less than a month ago we were just talking about bomb threats? We were talking about the money and the security, new security stuff being put in place to ensure there were no bombs being set up anywhere. Right. So, uh, To get to the comments before we head on out on this lovely Thursday. Oh, man. Um, uh, oh, right. Um, uh, uh, Dr. Rick said, uh, Dr. Rick's will ride. And Rebecca says, uh, why don't mine show up? Um, I got your back with. Um, and then says, uh, uh, Gary says, every dorm has that brother uh, who is a pharmacist. He's got everything. Um, and, and that's facts. Uh, and then says, all rideshare systems are based on surge of calls coming in to the network. They can't control that. All they can do is reimburse the people. Uh, Sarge, it has to do with supply and demand. When you don't have many drivers, uh, you want to reward the drivers. And then Rebecca says, aren't surcharges based on demand? The higher the demand? The higher the uh, surcharge. And Gary says, how are university presidents uh, resigning? I guess when you're used to living in a hut and walking 20 miles one way to school in Trinidad, you don't see a problem with housing at the university. Um, and, and, and to um, um, to respond to those um, uh, surcharges, um, uh, the surcharge, uh, you get your surcharge based off of these three things, um, a special event. Um, whether it be a sporting event or a concert or, in this case, a mass shooting, um, rush hour or bad weather. Um, and, and those are, are really the top, uh, the top reasons why you see a, um, a surcharge. The reason for the surcharge is uh, that that attracts more, more drivers uh, to deal with what you all said, that high demand of drivers in that one location. So, folks, um, like we said, we are going to uh, put a pin in it right there. Um, um, unfortunately, um, we'll be taking on the next couple days off to kind of recalibrate things, uh, get things ready for the summertime. Uh, uh, but, uh, but even though uh, we will not be here, you can uh, still enjoy uh, the many, many shows that uh, TCP Network uh, has for you. Um, a lot of great things. Coming down the pipeline, um, so stay tuned, folks. Uh, we do this thing called news because we love it. 
uh, and we love you. Lady L. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Hey, listen, you can always visit our YouTube page to check out some old episodes of TCP in the morning. Check out some of our classic news break guests and even check out some of our community uh, videos that we've made over the years. But listen, guys, while we're on break, I want you to know that so are the kids. Yeah, it's spring break for them, too. So go on ahead and get them out to the Creative Interactive Play Center. Get out there to visit the great people at Busy Bodies Play Cafe, owned and operated by early childhood educators, now open at Rockville Outlets. Also, guys, listen, I we are working on Food Truck Friday, so if you know someone with a food truck, ice cream truck, taco, soul food, or other, we're bringing Food Truck Fridays to Lancaster So We Community. So inbox us if you're interested in being a vendor at Food Truck Fridays. And the last thing that I just want to let you guys know is that the prom is returning this year. So make sure you sign up for our email to be the first to know when tickets are released on our website, www.thetcpnetwork.com. Over to the desk. Hey, y'all. Y'all know what it is. It's vacation time. I'm ready. I'm ready to get out. I'm ready to unwind, get some sun in my life. Yes. You know, um, I just want to say I love my life, and I feel like I am so blessed. And I love y'all. appreciate y'all. So I'd like to say this to my kings and queens, my princes and princesses, my baby boys and baby dolls. To he, him, her, she, they, them, we, we baby. baby. We love you. And I want y'all to repeat after me. Say, I'm going to make. I'm going to make. The rest of my life. The rest, rest of, of my, my life. life. The best of my life. The best of my life. Have a good weekend, y'all. Hey. Good weekend. There it is, folks. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you for joining us uh, for um, another episode of uh, TCP in the morning. Uh, this is uh, kind of ki kind of um, painstaking. It, it, it's a gift and a curse um, because I know the team um, <laughs> is really looking forward uh, uh, to this break. But, um, but again, uh, it's just like my news. What am I going to do with my news? Uh, so, um, uh, uh, folks, um, always, always, always uh, love you, appreciate you, um, and, and we will see you all um, on the other side. Enjoy your family. Um, ultimately, Easter. enjoy yourself. Happy Easter. Happy Passover. Happy weekend. Yes. Uh, if you do not celebrate, uh, turn up. It's turn up season. Yo, stop being mad your kids are at home, too. <laughs> start, start enjoying having your kids around, man. I, I like, yo, I was at school. I was at school yesterday, and you heard a lot of the a lot of the teachers like, "Yeah, you gotta have your kids at home." And the parents were like, "Yeah, I know." I'm like, "Gotta have them? No, I get to have them at home. Enjoy your families, man." All right, absolutely. Man. So, folks, going to leave it there. Um, and on that note, we'll see you in church. It's morning. Wake up, guys. It's TCP in the morning. Wake, Wake up. up. Wake 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 up. It's TCP in the morning. 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 TCP in the morning. It's 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 TCP in the morning. Good morning. Wake up, y'all. It's TCP in the morning with the morning tea. Sing the song here in the back. TCP.